When we talk about comparing two sets of data, we are often searching for answers to other questions. For example, how can we tell if an examination is more difficult in one year or another? Just looking at two sets of data on our screen doesn't really tell us much about the student's performance. So say if we were to sort our two sets of data here, we might be able to pick out certain key characteristics. We might be able to see the, the max and the min values. We might be able to see that in 2010 we had a student who failed the exam, uh, or in 2011 we had a student who got a 90 on the exam. We can't really say much more about the similarities or differences without the help of descriptive statistics. So we can start by talking about some measures of central tendency. And we'll start by finding the mean of both of these. So let's find the mean here. And the mean here. And we'll approximate both. So we just click on approximate here just to see what the decimal value is. So we can see now between two years that the, uh, the mean value actually jumped up a couple points, so just under three. Now, although this may not initially sound like a lot, considering this is across all the students, this might be a fairly big jump. And this jump might lead us to ask other questions, such as if the final exam was a little bit too easy this year, or if there was uh, last year there was some problem understanding the material. But really before we, under we, uh, we commit to either of, of these alternatives, what we need to do is we need to examine the spread of the data. So we can start by looking at the range. So for 2010, we can see the range is going to be equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value. So in this case, the range is going to be equal to 82 minus 28 is 54. In uh, 2011, the range is going to be equal to 90 minus 50, or 40. So there was a much narrower range in 2011, and this is mostly just due to the fact that, as we can see from the range itself, no one failed the course. So if we wanted to investigate the spread in the absence of the outlying low mark, we might also consult the interquartile range. So what I'll do is I'm just going to grab this data and move it down here. Same thing with this data here. And now let's find the interquartile range. And in this case, I'm going to actually return this as a plot. We'll do the same thing over here. So now what we can see from, from the two plots here is that the interquartile range for 2011 is in fact much higher than 2010. And this shows us that the data between the first and the th third quartiles are more spread apart than the previous years. Now, since the range and the interquartile range really only give us a limited view on variability, we might at this point instead turn to looking at the true variability in all the observations, namely the standard deviation. And this will enable us to consider all of the observations. So now if we right click here and we choose to find the standard deviation, and again I'll approximate this to five digits, we'll do the same thing here. We can see between years that the two values for the standard deviation are fairly close. And uh, with this knowledge, we might now want to spend some more time investigating whether or not the exam was, in fact, more difficult this year than last. And this might account for that the jump in the mean, or if there might be any other mitigating factors which would have caused the grades to jump.